Greetings, my name is Ted Hicks. I'm the founder, CEO, and Chief Investment Officer for Hicks & Associates Wealth Management. Today's Thursday, September 28th, 2023. And while we normally shoot these videos on Fridays, given the fact that Friday will be the last day of the month, in terms of the stock market at least, uh, that means Monday is the first business day of the next month. Now, that's typically when we shoot our, our monthly market monologue. So I will most likely do that on Monday, but I wanted to shoot something today uh, because of the volatility that we continue to see in this correction. So that's the purpose of this video is to give an update on what we're seeing in the stock market. And then on Monday, we'll go into a little bit more depth and probably talk a little bit more about economics and things of that nature. That said, I would be remiss if I did not introduce myself and my firm to those of you who are watching this video and our channel for the first time. Hicks & Associates Wealth Management serves individuals and families in a proactive capacity. Uh, we serve our clients uh, by being intimately familiar with their finances and their financial plan, which we will help them to create. Uh, and we do this by being intimately familiar with their finances so that we can guide their dis financial decision making in a data uh, driven manner. Uh, for most of our clients, we also serve as their portfolio manager, proactively managing their investments in a truly active fiduciary and a fee based approach. If you want to learn more, obviously, you can find uh, find out more details at hicks associates.com or you can certainly email me directly. That said, let's dive in. And uh, the first thing I want to talk about today is what is referred to as our seasonality chart. So on the screen right now, we have a seasonality chart and it shows the average performance for the S&P 500 from 1950 through 2023. So over here, we see this blue dot. This blue dot represents the current S&P 500 performance for the month of September. Uh, you can see that September is the worst month out of the calendar year uh, for the stock market. You can also see August is a tough month and February on average is also a tough month. And so when we look at what's happening in the stock market, we need to, to, to step back for just a second and say, well, is what we're experiencing normal or is there something else that's going on? Because if this is normal, then we can probably just ride through any some uh, short term of volatility. But if it's uh, the beginning of a downtrend, then we need to potentially take different action. And so that's the purpose of this video today is talk a little bit about what we, we see. On the screen right now is a chart for the S&P 500 dating back to the tail end of 2021. I know there's a lot going on on this chart and I'm going to try to walk you through it so that it is not uh, so overwhelming. So bear with me just a minute, but this is important for you to help you to understand what we see and why we are not panicking, but instead are executing our strategies. So um, again, a daily candle chart, and we want to start back here on the left-hand side of the page. The beginning of 2002 was uh, the, the top of the stock market. And we know the stock market went down and it struggled all year last year. But what we can see is we can draw this red trend line on the tops or the peaks of the peaks and valleys. So the market is always going to go up and down, up and down, up and down. But what is the trend? Well, last year, the stock market went uh, more down than up, but there were periods where it, it came back up. And so you can see this peak in March. We see a peach here in August. And then there was this peak in November. And if you draw a trend line on top of those peaks, you can see this negative slope very easily. So that's the red line is that trend line from the January 2022 top. So this is the same chart. We've just zoomed in just a little bit to make it a little easier to see. Um, and what we want to start looking at now is the green to the two different green trend lines that I have drawn here. And we really can't draw this trend line until much later in the year. Um, but here's what we see. We see October, the market bottomed. We didn't know it at the time and the market started to rally and it struggled when it got back up to this black line as a 200 day moving average again and the red trend line. Now, again, red trend lines are subjective. They're subjectively drawn. They are guidelines. We don't there. There's nothing in technical analysis. There's also nothing in fundamental analysis, by the way, 
there is nothing in any type of analysis that is always going to work. And so a trend line is just a guide. It is a suggestion of what might be happening. Um, so we see this in uh, November where the market, as measured by the S&P 500, got back up to this level and we couldn't break through that trend line. We couldn't really stay above this black 200-day moving average, so the market came back down. Now, uh, market tried again in early January of 2023, and this time we were actually able to break through. So here's this peak February 1st. This is a really important uh, level, and this is the point that we're trying to talk about today is this, this point right here. This February 1 peak um, we knew that it took out the highs from late 2023, where this peak right here, um, but then the stock market started to come right back in. Now, again, if you go back to that seasonality chart that I was just showing you a few minutes ago, you know that February, by historical standards, February is a tough month. So the fact that the market started to sell off a little bit in February is not that surprising, but let's look at what happened. So we got the stock market got up to about 4,200. That is the point. 4,200 is a very key level. We've been talking about that a lot, both in our videos, as well as in the research that we send to uh, other advisors who have subscribed to our weekly research. And so the market got here, we started to sell off and what happened? We came back down to this red trend line. So one of the fundamentals or the principles in, in technical analysis is a prior uh, resistance tends to become support. And that's what happened here. If you go back and you look at that red trend line, that, tr that red trend line was resistance. The stock market couldn't break through it. And when we finally broke through it, the stock market came back down and it tested that level. It tested that trend line. And so that trend line then served as support. And that's really important. Now at this point, now we can start to really draw this green trend line. And I've drawn them two different ways because trend lines are subjective. As I said, the way that I historically draw them is I draw them where the majority, uh, where there's more touches. This dark green line is touched more than the light green trend line. So that's the dark line is my default. Um, but when we come back over here, and I'll cut, get to this in a second, this trend line got broken. And that's where we're going to look at this other trend line. So again, trying not to get into the weeds, but we're trying to also help you to understand what do we see? Well, we saw that the 4200 level was very important because that's the level where the stock market failed. It got up to that point and it couldn't go any further, but it did come down and it got tested. It tested that resistance. This red trend line became support in the market rally. But what happened when we got back to this 4200 level, the stock market uh, couldn't break through. It took a while for the market to really break through. And just so you know, 4200 there's nothing magic about it. And it's not that number, it's that level. It's plus or minus. And so when the stock market is rallying into in April and in May and it's in this zone, it really, it's having a hard time breaking through that. It finally broke through that. And we can see somewhat decisively on Friday, June 2nd. And that's where the market really continued to rally. We have this uh, high. And then again, we're in August. If we know our market history, we know that August and September historically, not always, but historically August and September are tough months. And so the fact that we're having a little bit of a sell-off in August, it doesn't surprise us. The fact that, that the sell-off continues and in fact worsens in September doesn't surprise us because we know our seasonality, we know our history that that is typically what happens. And so now we're going to look at the videotape, if you will. We're going to look at the chart to see, well, has this really broken down? And we see, again, we're at this level here, this green trend line. You can see that the market fell through. The S&P fell through that level. Now, this black line here, that candle is Tuesday. Tuesday, we were below this level the entire day. Not a good day. Many of us, myself included, were really hoping that this level would hold as support. This level here dates all the way back to August 16th, that high. It is funny how this works, but we see it time and time again. 
in uh, the stock market when you're studying uh, charts that this level from August 16th ends up being a support level. Well, that didn't work. It fell through. And what ended up happening so far, and again, I'm recording this on Thursday the 28th, what happened is yesterday the stock market opened, it traded lower, it got down to this green trend line, and then, as you'll see in a second, buyers stepped in and, and, and the stock market was able to rally such that Wednesday the stock market closed basically the same spot where Tuesday. It's almost as if the stock market didn't even open on Wednesday. There was very little change in the S&P 500, as you can see on the screen. Very little change um, between Tuesday's close and Wednesday's close. Now, one other thing that I'll point out here, these this black... Uh, dotted line. This is what's referred to as an anchored volume weighted average price. It's something we look at a lot as well and we can see that it also acted as support. So what we're trying to point out here is this level of 4200 is very very important. I'm hoping that this level here, this green trend line and this anchored VWAP, that this is indeed going to hold as support. But the point is when we have a level of like 4200, when that level is important on the breakout. It was really important. It, the market really struggled to break out of that. When that happens, it is very, very common for the market to go back and retest that level, just like it did with this red trend line. That red trend line was became very important. The stock market struggled to break through it. When it finally broke through it, historically, we would expect that to be tested and it's exactly what happened. And so, so far, what we're witnessing in the stock market is in line with what we would expect. We expect August and September to be difficult because history says that it is. We would expect the 4200 level to be tested. And so far, we haven't quite got down there, but we have at least tested this downtrend line. So, so far, nothing is surprising us. Now, let's continue. And I do want to show this really quickly. This is uh, the five minute chart. This is from yesterday. And this is really what we want to see is the stock market sold off. And I've got the red box is the trading hours. Everything below before this is pre-market and then this is post-market. So this is really when the stock market is open is inside this red box. And the stock market on Wednesday sold off. But then right around um, 1.30, some buyers stepped in and the market was able to rally such that if we go back to this, the close for Wednesday was very, very similar to the close on Tuesday. That's actually a very good sign. Now, as I'm recording this today on Wednesday the 29th, the S&P 500 is again trading up. Uh, off of this level that we're seeing here. So that is a very good sign. So it is possible that this is going to hold. Now, one of the things that has in, been in the news for the last several days it has been the potential government shutdown. And um, not going to get into the politics of it, but here's the point. The stock market discounts the future. Um, and so far with the rally that we're seeing in the stock market today, it is suggesting that the average investor d is not concerned about the government shutdown. Either the government sh is not going to actually shut down, that's what the stock market is saying, or the stock market is suggesting that if the government shuts down, it's not that big of a deal, it won't last that long or whatever. The stock market is discounting that. Now, if there's no final action today before the market closes or tonight, then it is certainly possible that Friday, tomorrow, and the last trading day of September, it is certainly possible that we have a tough day on Friday, either because the government is more likely to shut down or because it's the last day of the of of the trading month, but it doesn't change what we're going to be looking at. We're still going to be looking at these levels to see, are we holding? Is this trend now broken? Have we fallen through such that we need to be much more defensive? Right now, we're, we're on guard. We're cautious. We're following our rules. And if one of our triggers gets hit, that trigger gets executed. And you can see if you're a client of ours, we have made trades this week. Um, so, I hope that helps and we'll look at one or two other things and we'll land the plane for today.
So in our last video, we talked about what has been dubbed the Magnificent Seven, and it's been so dubbed because there's really just a handful, seven stocks that have had fantastic years. And what most people still do not quite understand is the fact that the S&P 500 is cap weighted. So these really large seven, and I'm gonna throw one more in there today, eight, these eight stocks that are really large, or we're going to use the term enormous, and I'm taking that from another technician that I saw who has dubbed it the enormous eight. These eight stocks have significant influence on the performance of the S&P 500. And what we're going to show you is the massive divergence between these small handful of stocks and everything else. So on the screen right now, we have that magnificent seven, and again, one more to make it uh, the enormous eight and I'm getting that from Charlie Bellello. That's I don't know if he named that from himself or somewhere else But anyway, you see that Nvidia is up hundred and ninety seven percent year-to-date meta or Facebook 138 uh, Tesla, you know Amazon Google I, and that Netflix is the worst of these enormous eight at 28 percent but where's the s p 500 and the rsp rsp is the equal weight so the s p 500 through yesterday uh wednesday the 27th the s p 500 is positive approximately 11.8 percent but look at this equal weight s p 500 that is negative year to date as of yesterday. So again, the S&P 500 is cap weighted. So the performance of that index is based upon the size of the individual stocks. So size of the individual stocks influence the overall weight. And the analogy that I use uh, have been using is just to take Michael Jordan and the NBA. Imagine if the NBA ever got together back in Michael Jordan's heyday, or they could do it with LeBron James, I guess, today. But imagine if the NBA said, well, Michael Jordan is so important. He's such a big player. We've got to give him more points. When, when he shoots a basket, it's not going to count for two. It's going to count for four or for six or for eight. And when he shoots a basket behind the three-point line, it's actually going to count for nine points. That's effectively how the S&P 500 is calculated. Now, the RSP is the equal weight or one equal weight ETF that is mimicking the S&P 500, but it gives uh, the same weighting to every stock that is in that index. And again, that index is negative year to date. So yes, the index S&P 500 is positive, but it is positive because there's a handful of stocks, a very few handful of stocks that are positive year to date. Now, let's look at the equal weight sectors. The S&P 500 is traditionally broken down into 11 different uh, sectors. And so um, those individual sector ETFs are also cap weighted. The versions that are on the screen right now, these are equal weight sectors. And what we want to see is, again, on the right hand side, this is te the technology sector. The equal weight technology sector is up 14.5% year to date. The equal weight energy sector is up 11.95. But look at everything else. You can see this is. Um, this is actually consumer staples. Consumer staples are negative 12%, the equal weight version, negative 12% year to date. Equal weight utilities, negative 11.9%. So what we're trying to show is this is not a bull market. This is not a healthy stock market. So while we believe the, the, the levels that we've been talking about are going to hold, that is my bias, but we are on guard. Why are we on guard? Because when we look beneath the surface, this is not a healthy stock market. And if we look at these equal weights, we just take out uh, technology and energy. Again, you see the picture. There's definitely a, a downward bias, especially these last couple of months. And the last slide that I'll show you is here. These are the 11 sectors within the S&P 500, but these are the equal weight versions. And I have sorted this list by year to date return. So you can see technology again um, through yesterday's up 14, uh, energy up seven and a half and just barely outperforming industrials. But what I really want you to notice is these green, uh, uh, green uh, true false signals. There's only one sector 
that is above all three of these key moving averages. So the equal weight energy sector is above its short term, medium term and long term moving averages. Energy is once again the leader right now. Again, what we're experiencing right now for the most part is not surprising. We expect a little bit of weakness in August and September, and we expected the 4200 level and that positive trend line. We expected those things to be tested. If they hold, then I, my bias is, is that the between now and the end of the year, based upon historical averages, the upward bias, uh, we should have a, a, a tailwind at our back between now and the end of the year. And that is not me making a prognostication. That is simply me looking at market history, going back to the seasonality chart that we were showing. October, November, December, and January are the four best months in the stock market year. So yes, what we're going through right now is not necessarily fun, but it's not surprising. And so far we are on guard and we are following our rules in terms of how we manage clients and how where we position clients, etc. We'll come back on Monday and I'll shoot another video, talk a little bit about the economy. As you know, there has been a number of the highest number ever of economists that are predicting a recession. They've been predicting a recession for well over a year. So far, we have not seen a recession. And as I'll show you on Monday, the forecast for fourth quarter or from sorry for third quarter GDP are quite positive, uh, not recessionary. So we'll come back on Monday and show you those uh, that a uh, little bit more detail. And uh, again, hopefully these videos help. If you haven't subscribed, we certainly hope you take the minute and click that subscribe button. By all means, feel free to share these videos with others that you think might find, the, find them helpful. And if you have any questions about how my team and I can serve you, whether it's through financial planning or through our active management approach, by all means, feel free to reach out to us. We would be more than happy to see if we can be of service to you. Again, thanks for watching and we'll talk to you again soon.